Seth Gold actually gets along with his sister. Wouldn't you know it, after nine seasons of bickering back and forth, explosive arguments, and fights that looked like they would turn physical, Seth and his sister Ashley are actually pretty close and get along just fine. Arguably, the family drama was what made Hardcore Pond so entertaining. Nick Scott, thank you for joining us. Hey, it's an honor. Glad to be here. Nick, uh, you know, you've got a pretty incredible story. Why don't we uh, you start at the top, man, and let everyone know how you've made a journey, for, uh, a pretty incredible journey that I, I have a lot of respect for. Yeah, it's been a long journey. Um, back in 98, I was 16 years old. I was in a left, I was in a car accident. My left front tire blew out. I rolled my vehicle five and a half times, and I was ejected out of the driver's side window. My own car hit me in the back. It broke my back and damaged my spine, mm. and the doctors diagnosed me as paraplegic, and they said I would never walk again. Before we move on, you wouldn't be the first person to think that Hardcore Pawn was a ripoff of the uber-popular, pawning reality show, Pawn Stars. When the American Jewelry and Loan debuted, fans of the gold and silver pawn shop were quick to criticize the newly launched series, calling it a cheap knockoff. Apt term in the world of pawning, so points for that. But Seth defended his family's show and reminded people that his father had been in talks with Richard Dominic, Hardcore Pawn's co-creator, for years before they finally decided to release the show. Why did it take them until 2009 to actually premiere when they'd been talking about it for years? Again. I got severely depressed, borderline suicidal, and then my weight went up to 300 pounds. And I realized one thing um, going through all the depression is what's the one thing you gain from losing everything? It's a perspective. Because then all of a sudden my perspective changed because it wasn't about if my glass was empty or half full. I was just grateful that I had a glass. So I started changing my life and going back to high school, I realized I didn't have nothing. So I eventually saw the boyfriend, girlfriends walking with their hands fingers in a clock, I couldn't do that stuff anymore. So I thought going to the gym would save me. But then I saw squats, power cleans, and all these things, and I realized I couldn't do that stuff. Well, Seth actually was the reason for the show. Well, Seth actually was the reason the show has been delayed for years. Dominic reached out to Les Gold, the patriarch and owner of American Jewelry and Loan, back when he saw a couple of commercials. Dominic was a producer on The Jerry Springer Show, and saw a few of Les's commercials in between breaks. He liked Les's charisma and knew there was a reality show star hidden in there somewhere. Seth, however, pushed back. He claimed that being part of a reality series circuit would ruin the family's credibility as legitimate pawnbrokers. We know that Les eventually We know that Les eventually vetoed him and went ahead with signing a deal with True TV. And you know what? Seth couldn't be happier about it. Right now, Seth is majorly active on three social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Cameo. That's right, you can get a special customized message from you. That's right, you can get a special customized message for you or your loved ones straight from the voice of reason on Hardcore Pawn himself. On Instagram, on the other hand, Seth has the most followers of the Gold family members, clocking in at 350,000. He's also recently joined TikTok, where fans thought Seth looked eerily like his father. Honestly, some fans couldn't tell the difference. A lot of the comments center around how Seth has essentially taken the risk. So let's talk about the first competition that you entered in 2006. Talk to me a little bit about how bodybuilding or wheel wheelchair bodybuilding competition has grown since then. What it was is like I did powerlifting competitions for two years. I got 39 first place, two seconds, one third. I'm a two-time world powerlifting champion. Then I went and get my bachelor's in business administration, and then I... I I had the urge to compete again. So I Googled if they had wheelchair bodybuilding or bodybuilding for people in wheelchairs in two, the fall of 2005. It took me forever to find something, but eventually saw a show in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida in March. So I'm like, hey, I'll just do it. So I Googled how to train to be a bodybuilder. I started training, and I just flew down there, and I competed, and I lost. I got second, and I was, I was, <laughs> I was mad. I was furious. I wanted to hit the dude with the trophy. But that night... <laughs> Just seeing the guys just struggling and all these challenges, I was so amazed and inspired. I told the guys, like, this is amazing. We need to let the world know about it. He's also recently joined TikTok, where fans thought Seth looked eerily like his father. Honestly, some fans couldn't tell the difference. A lot of the comments center around how Seth has essentially taken the reins from Les and was now turning into, well, Les himself. But in a good way, of course. Speaking of which... The question on everybody's mind right now is probably whether Seth took over his family business or not. Well, yes and no. 
One of the crucial plot points of the show was how Seth and Ashley couldn't get along because each staked their claim on their father's business. He knows how to make things happen. This guy moves so fast on the on the floor. We ha- we wanted to meet some people, and Nick's like, "Oh yeah, I know him, no problem." So, well, mm-hmm. I saw you get out of that chair. What what's that What's that progress looking like right now? Well, it took me about five and a half years of doing rehab and doing ex- extensive like rehab of learning how to use the muscles I have in my legs because my quads started to come back, but I can't feel nothing from the knees down. I popped up my toenails, so I know I can't feel my feet. People say that, but. It's, it's just a weird sensation. It's basically like put your put your arm under a pillow and um, drag your fingers on top of the pillow. You just know something's there, but you don't really know where it's at. Right. So that's how like my feet feel. It's a weird sensation, but I can I get to the point where I can get up and take short steps. It's got to it's got to make you feel amazing. To I mean, when when someone tells you, and like I said, I've known people in my life that have been told they'll never walk again, and most of them are walking in some way, shape, or form. It's got to make you feel unbelievable. Yeah, it does, and. Over the time, it really, I realized that it wasn't about me because going through this process, it really opened the eyes to other people that if I can do it, they can do it too. We were talking to the very inspirational Nick Scott, and there are people that are listening right now, I'm sure, that are going through a lot of what you went through, and hopefully not many of them had to go through a, a similar situation of being able to walk. In reality, the two of them get along just fine and run the business together, with Les still spearheading the whole thing. Yep, he's still alive and well at 73. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. In recent news, Seth debuted his new action figure, which is a mini version of himself and apparently a part of the Hardcore Pawn collection, which no one really knew about. But now everyone seems to want to collect all three central figures. Figurines in this case. He also went with his father on a tour to Europe recently, where they stopped over in Italy, met up with some fans, and took a couple of photos. Yes, Hardcore Pawns isn't just an international sensation, it's one that's relevant in any day and age. I remember you guys when you asked me, do you think you, do you, think you can get me to Hulk Hogan? <laughs> I, I still have that picture with all of us. <laughs> Tell the viewers about that experience. <laughs> we have. We have. In a previous podcast, oh, we yeah. did we did talk about like childhood idols. And Hogan was them. a hero of mine and Seth's, I'm for sure. <laughs> Nick, uh, I read a great quote of yours. Uh, you said, don't expect everyone to understand your journey if they've never had to walk your path. You know, I think a lot of people, there's so much misunderstanding, unfortunately, that goes on in this world. And did you ever kind of experience people misunderstanding your situation and, and, and ways that maybe people that are listening right now can kind of get? Ashley is a viral sensation. Now, fans have had their own favorites from the show. Whether it's someone who was a part of the Gold family or someone who was just working at the pawn shop or even a patron with an interesting story. Everyone had their top threes. But Ashley was on everyone's list. That's just how iconic Les's daughter was. And <clears throat> Interestingly enough, in the years since True TV took Hardcore Pawn off the air and only reruns are playing on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, Ashley's clips are the ones that fans enjoy the most. And why wouldn't they? Ashley was known for three things. Her conflicts with Seth over who should run the American Jewelry and Loan Pawn Shop. This makes sense, since she has a diamond certification from the Gemological Institute of America and an MBA from Michigan State University. And most importantly, her dive. Working at one of Detroit's oldest and most famous pawn shops isn't as smooth as sailing as it made out to be. Working at one of Detroit's oldest and most famous pawn shops isn't as smooth sailing as it's made out to be. Honestly, ever since pawn shops entered the reality television niche, Come this way, baby. Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? She's rough, she's tough. But outside of the reality TV chaos of Hardcore Pawn, Ashley Gold is something more. I have never really let people into the private side. Tonight, this local woman talks motherhood, her new business, and why she feels she had to walk away from the spotlight. Well, some would say she had a sweet deal, a reality TV show, fame, and financial success. But for Ashley Gold, there was a price to pay. Sometimes things are not what they seem to be. Local force Karen Drew takes us inside Ashley's Oakland County home to find out why this reality star walked away from the fame and started a new business that's now getting international attention. I think a lot of people can learn from Ashley's story. The 38-year-old mother of two was overworked. Her health was taking a dive, and she was really missing out on some crucial family time. Yes, she was part of a hit TV show, but after years of success... You've seen a different side of the apparently cutthroat industry. 
While the Gold family was a lot more volatile than the Harrisons over at Pawn Stars, Ashley was arguably the one who kept the fans entertained the most. Mostly because she knew what she was talking about and was willing to stand her ground no matter what, even when it came to conflicts with Seth and her father. An interesting fact about the show is that True TV actually asked the Gold family to tone down some of the violence starting in season 2 because of viewer complaints. Besides that, another hardcore pawn tidbit you probably didn't know until this video is that the Gold family members doubled as executive producers starting in season 3. Today, Ashley continues work with her father and brother at the pawn shop whenever she gets the chance. However, she since ventured out into the less violent and chaotic world of jewelry sales. Again, she has a diamond certification and an MBA. Great things to have in your arsenal when you're starting an authentic jewelry brand. Speaking of which, all of her pieces come with certification from experts, including herself. She also doesn't go by Ashley Broad anymore, just Ashley Gold, like her brother. Could this mean something? We don't know for sure. What we do know, however, is that Ashley's had a glow up in recent years. Fans noticed Ashley's look different. She decided to call it quits, but what she decided to do has a lot of people talking. So, did you test that? This is how most of the world knows Ashley Gold. Because he told me. Excuse me. A tough chick working at a Soundfield pawn store with her brother and dad. Look, let me ask you something. No. No, you shut. be quiet. Look, come this way, baby. Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? The store, the staff, and the customers so interesting, a reality show is made of the business, and the ratings soared. I was in the pawn shop for my entire life, mm -hmm. and I loved it, and I thought that's what I was going to do forever. But I had literally that aha moment where I was like, something's got to change. She admits she was overweight, not healthy, and was missing a ton of time with her family. My favorite thing is layering. That's why Ashley Gold is spending much of her time now inside her Oakland County home. Put this on because this is a great color with what you're wearing. Okay. Running her new online business, Pawn Chick Shopping. Fans noticed Ashley looked different in some of her more recent pictures on her Instagram page. Ashley appears slimmer and a lot happier with some fans commenting that she made a 180 from her appearance on the show. It's a welcome change, if any, and Ashley commented on it during an interview with Wish TV. Speaking of interviews, Ashley reminisced about her time on the show fondly and said that she wouldn't trade the experience for anything in the world. She also talked about the ins and outs of pawning industry and all the nuances that are involved. You know, the stuff that isn't glamorous enough to make it on screen. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me today on Pawn Chick Radio. How are you today? She also has started her own weekly podcast. I interview a celebrity every week. They air on Fridays at 8 a.m. And I interview them not about me or how we can relate. I interview them about what's going on in their life. So those air out, and I'm having a great response from that. But most importantly, the 38-year-old says she gets to be home with her husband and 8- and 10-year-olds, living a life she didn't think possible, a businesswoman with time for her family. I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm, I was PTO president. In any case, she said that she's happier than she's ever been, 10 years on, and she still shows up to meet and greets here and there with fans recognizing her as the star of Hardcore Pawn. In fact, Ashley claimed that she didn't even know there was a large enough Hardcore Pond fan base in other corners of the world. Did you know there are Hardcore Ponders in Europe and Africa? And now for the guy who stole the show, or, well, pawned it in this case, and made it into the success we all remember, the patriarch of the Gold family. Les Gold is still in business. Okay, a lot of us fell in love with you, Hardcore Pawn. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in that show. So I'm a pawnbroker, been a mm -hmm. pawnbroker my entire life since the age of seven. So I was a pawnbroker, the manager of American Jewelry and Loan, and uh, we did a promotion in the parking lot many, many years ago, and the executive producer from the Jerry Springer show came Little by little, they approached us for a reality show. Six and a half years later, 175 episodes later, we had Hardcore Pawn. So what are, when, you, when you are in the pawn business, what are some, some tokens, or if you're looking to pawn something off, what should you know and always keep in mind? So I always know, 
And people should always know when they come in, because it's different when somebody comes in versus the position that I was always in, sure. um, you know, always look to negotiate, always know that we're fair with you. And as a pawnbroker, we're fair with you, be fair with us. And people always knew me as the villain. I wasn't the villain, but when people took their one TV off their wall to feed their kids or to get a prescription from the drugstore, mm-hmm. and we said no, or I said no, people always thought, oh my God, Ashley, you know, is being so mean and they're not giving us the money that we want. But it wasn't that it was because it wasn't worth the money that they thought it was worth. Sure. Um, so we're trying to be fair. We're trying to give the customer as much as we possibly could. Right. So negotiate. There is a little wiggle room. And do you find a lot of people are emotionally attached to items that they're trying to pawn off? Separate the emotion. That's yeah. number one. You yes. have to separate the emotion. I think that's true in any business. You mm-hmm. have to take the emotion out of it because let me tell you something with every item that's in pawn, there's a story. The man of the hour star of the show himself, Les Gold was the reason most of us tuned in to watch Hardcore Pawn. As a third-generation pawn shop owner and salesman, Les knew a thing or two about the industry when he opened up his first pawn store in 1978, American Jewelry and Loan at the Green 8th Shopping Center in Oak Park. Loan, why does that name sound familiar? Might be because of the pawn shop Sam's Loans, which was started by Les's grandfather, and was where the future pawnbroker made his first sale. So what's going on with the show? It's been a while since it's been on the air. Last time I talked to you, you said you were in negotiation. Contemplating for another show for Hardcore Pond. Well, it's still very popular all around the world. Right. Uh, we're the number one show in Italy, Spain, still, Australia. You, 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 you can do whatever you want. Heck yes. And, and uh, so in reruns, it's still... It's doing reruns, so we're, yeah, it's you, still very, you very popular. Do you get a residual? We really don't, but you know, what we get is we get people coming to the city of Detroit, right. which is most important to us. Okay. People crossing 8 Mile that never crossed 8 Mile before, coming to the city is most important to us. And you find that some people from out of town come... And he guess on how old Les was when he closed his first deal at his grandfather's pawn shop? Here's a hint, it's younger than you'd think. He was reportedly only seven years old when he closed his first deal, making his granddad proud and cementing the idea that this was the right career for him. His first business, by the way, was selling slices of pizza at Hebrew school. Les would buy a large pizza and sell a slice for an inflated amount to a bunch of 12-year-olds. Easy money. Anyway, he opened up his first pawn shop in 1978 and then relocated it to the Greenfield Road in Detroit in 1993. That's where the pawn shop stands to this day. Now, Sam's Loan was a pretty successful pawn shop, but it has closed down. Uh A couple more maybe in the city of Detroit, Uh and then we'll do some uh, some cities outside, some some stores in the suburbs. Okay, so you're a busy man. We're very busy, thank goodness. Are you still enjoying it? I love it as much as I always did. It's the art of the deal. I know that somebody else wrote that book, (laughs) but it's always about the art of the deal, and that's why we're here, to help the city of Detroit, American Coney Island, just to be part of the excitement that's going on in the city. Do you, do you ever have customers come in and they're so crazy and go, God, I wish we would have had that on TV? We do that all the time. And people come in, and, and you know, the tourists come in, and they say, God, we sure hope you throw somebody out. But what they don't realize is that sometimes it could be dangerous throwing somebody out. So we're happy with peace and quiet. Peace and quiet. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. But it did close down a couple years in. As for American Jewelry and Loan, it's still kicking today with five locations, 200 employees, and almost 1,000 customers a day. Speaking of which, that's what Les has been up to ever since Hardcore Pawn was canceled in 2014. He continues to run his successful pawning business, looking for more and more expansion opportunities every day. While Les hasn't had another opportunity to work in television since 2014, it looks like he doesn't want one now either. He's perfectly happy running his pawn shop and moonlighting as a public speaker. In 2013, right before the show was canceled, Les wrote his first book, For What It's Worth, Advice from a Pawnbroker. The book debuted at number four in the New York Times bestseller under the advice category and was featured in an episode of Good Morning America, where the host discussed Les's life and the secrets to his success. On that note, Les actually refers to himself and fellow pawnbrokers as street-level economists. He told Fox that he believed the number of people in pawn shops looking to sell versus those looking to redeem give. 
He told Fox that he believes the number of people in pawn shops looking to sell versus those looking to redeem gives you a good estimate of which way the economy is going. 